You can instantly boost your SAT and ACT score by memorizing punctuation rules because up to 25% of questions test punctuation. I'm going to go over what you must know, and I encourage you to take screenshots as we go along. An independent clause can stand on its own. It's basically a sentence, and it has a subject and a verb. A dependent clause cannot stand on its own and is not a complete thought. On the SAT and ACT, there are four ways to connect two independent clauses, a period, a semicolon, a colon, and a comma plus fanboys. There are four ways to connect an independent clause followed by a dependent clause, a comma, a dash, a colon, and fanboys, no comma. There is only one way to follow a dependent clause with an independent clause, and that's with a comma. Finally, I recommend these three Khan Academy exercises for additional practice. You must know this fact because it appears at least once on every ACT test. Periods and semicolons are the same, so if you see them in the answer choices, eliminate both. Rose here with a pro tip alert for the SAT writing section and the ACT English section. Periods and semicolons are the same. Both function to separate independent clauses. This type of question is very common. On the SAT writing section and the ACT English section. Look for answer choices where the words are the same, but the punctuation is different. Then, if you see an option with a period, like an A, and a semicolon in D, you can eliminate both. Woo! Let's try it again on this SAT question. We see that option A, no change has a period, and option B has a semicolon, and again, we can eliminate both. Yay! When a sentence starts with a dependent clause, a sentence piece that cannot stand on its own, it must be followed by a comma. So eliminate all other punctuation in the answer choices. When a sentence starts with a dependent clause, the subject of the sentence has to immediately follow the comma. So here it says, after removing the air from both containers and placing them in the dark. Well, who removed the containers? It was the researchers. So the correct answer is C. A common rule that you should know is that if a title comes before someone's name, such as President Barack Obama, you do not need commas between the title and the name. Here are some additional examples. Again, if a title comes before the name, don't put a comma between the title and the name. So applying that rule to this question, we can eliminate options F and J because both unnecessarily add commas between the title and the name. Finally, the correct answer is G because we don't need any commas. When a title comes before a person's name, like President Joe Biden, we don't put a comma between the title and the person's name. For example, we wouldn't say President, comma, Joe Biden. In this question, we have right fielder Ichiro Suzuki. Hi. Don't put a comma between his title and his name, so we can eliminate options A and C. Finally, the semicolon doesn't work here, so the correct answer is D. The most common way that commas are tested on the ACT is that they put more commas than are needed. So if you're ever unsure, just choose the answer with fewer commas. We know that if a title comes before a name, we do not put a comma. So we can eliminate answers B and D. So between A and C, we have to decide if a comma is needed after the name. So let's just substitute it with a different example. Would I say Rose, comma, was dismayed? Or Rose was dismayed? We don't need that comma there. So the correct answer is C. Fanboys are conjunctions, and they stand for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. When you're using a fanboys to connect two independent clauses, you must put a comma before the fanboys. When you are connecting an independent clause to a dependent clause, you do not put a comma before the fanboys. One way to use dashes is kind of like how you use parentheses. If there's a part of a sentence that you can take out, then you put parentheses or dashes around that part. Here, we can take out more than a mile wide in places, and the sentence works just fine.
try it. So, because we can take that part out, we need to put a pair of dashes around it, so the correct answer is G. Now, a shortcut is you can never mix commas and dashes on the ACT. You will only ever see a pair of dashes or a pair of commas. So if you see a comma or a dash in the sentence, look for that a punctuation in the answer choices to quickly eliminate answers. On the ACT, you don't mix dashes with other punctuation. So if you already see a dash in the sentence, select the answer that also has a dash. Remember, a colon can only be used after an independent clause. So you never use a colon after the words including, for example, or such as. So if you see it on the test, cross it out. Of all the punctuations, colons are definitely the most underestimated. Colons don't just come before lists. They're also used to introduce definitions, examples, explanations, and quotations. The most important thing to remember about colons is that the part before the colon has to be an independent clause. The part after the colon can be independent or dependent. In this example, a colon would be the correct punctuation because we are defining what Mark Anderson believed, which is that everyone would want the internet. In this example, a colon would also be appropriate because we are defining what that one link is to headquarters, homing pigeons.